What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Today is another international video. Did you know some countries are more dangerous than Detroit or a lingerie party at my cousin's ex-wife's house? <laughs> Yes, it's hard to believe, I know. She's had lingerie parties. In general, the world can be a dangerous place. You could be in danger no matter where your plane lands. The thing is, some countries excel in danger, and some even bump it up a notch depending on where you hail from. If you think everyone in the world loves America and its people, you've lived a sheltered life, and I want to congratulate you for escaping wherever you were being held and now are able to watch my videos on the internet. The fact is, some countries are dangerous for everyone, especially Americans. So much so the Department of State, some people know it as the State Department, but it's actually the Department of State, updates a report every couple weeks called the Travel Advisory. This is a report that ranks the danger level a country might have for Americans if they travel there. It has colors like a danger mood ring and goes by levels. Level 1 being blue, exercise normal precaution, all the way up to red for do not travel here. In today's video, we're looking at the top 10 level 4s and find out why. Alright, so let's see what countries you should avoid starting with Number 10, Syria. You should not go to Syria unless you're bulletproof. That is probably the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you. Syria has been in a civil war for about nine years now. Now, the, here's the fun part. It's a multi-sided civil war. So there's like three, four, five different factions fighting each other. That's always fun. That could be a problem because you never know who's shooting at you. Let's say you're cruising with a Syrian real estate agent looking for a nice partially bombed out duplex and shooting starts. You won't know who it is. The State Department offers this warning. No part of Syria is is safe from violence, kidnappings by armed groups, arbitrary arrests, the use of chemical warfare, shelling, and aerial bombardment pose a significant risk of death or serious injury. The destruction of the infrastructure, housing, medical facilities, schools, and power and water utilities has also increased the hardships inside the countries. So here it is. Don't go to Syria. Number 9. Burkina Faso. The first thing I should explain is I didn't just make that up. Burkina Faso is a real country in Africa, and it is very unfriendly towards Westerners, especially Americans. It is a West African country between Mali and Ghana with about 20 million residents. About 98% of them would be considered living in poverty. There is no reason to move here unless you're a dirt road enthusiast, because they got a lot of them. If you do feel like scratching this place off your bucket list, here's what the State Department says. Terrorist groups continue plotting attacks in Burkina Faso. Terror Terrorists may conduct attacks anywhere with little or no warning. Are there terrorists out there like, pencil me in for next Thursday, I'm going to blow up your building? Is that going on? I think they always attack with little or no warning. Targets could include hotels, restaurants, police stations, custom offices, areas in or around or near mines, place of worship, military posts, and schools. In other words, these guys don't care. They'll blow you up. Kidnappings and hostage taking are a threat throughout the country. On May 10th, 2019, a hostage rescue operation freed four international hostages that had been kidnapped in Burkina Faso. The government of Burkina Faso has maintained a state of emergency for most of the country. I'm sure they say most because there's parts of this country that are so dry camels don't even like to go to. Number 8. South Sudan. South Sudan is a landlocked country in East Central Africa with a population of about 12 million people. I did a video about the worst airports in the world and South Sudan's airport was on that list. Among the many, many issues this place has, the airport's restroom is a tent with a trench. I'm not even kidding. Every month or so they move the tent and the trench someplace else. There's no indoor plumbing at the airport, along with most other places. As a Sudanese man once told me, water is for drinking, not for pooping. So I guess that's their little motto. There. Anyway, here's the State Department's take on South Sudan. Violent crimes such as carjacking, shootings, ambushes, assaults, robberies, and kidnappings are common throughout South Sudan. Female foreign nationals have been victims of all kinds of bad stuff. I, they listed it, but I can't tell you because I don't want to get demonetized, but you can imagine what that is. Uh, armed robberies and other violent crimes happen all the time in the streets of South Sudan, when you could find streets. An armed conflict is ongoing, including fighting between various political and ethnic groups. Weapons are readily available to to the population. In addition, cattle raids throughout the country often lead to violence. They steal each other's cows, apparently. News reporting in South Sudan without the proper documentation from the South Sudanese media authority is considered illegal, and any journalistic work there is very dangerous. Journalists often report being harassed in South Sudan, and many of them have been killed while covering conflicts. So yeah, there's no reason to go here. 
Number seven, Yemen. Yemen hasn't been a tourist hotspot since, well, pretty much forever. The place kind of blows. It is a country on the Arabian Peninsula that shares a border with Oman to the east, Saudi Arabia to the north, and the Gulf of Aden to the south. Since medieval times, this really before, this place has had conflicts. The Yemen revolution followed other Arab Spring mass protests in early 2011. The uprising was initially against unemployment, economic conditions, and corruption, as well as against the government proposals to modify the constitution so that the guy in charge's son could inherit the presidency. So, you know, no more elections, you just give it to your son, which is kind of like a monarchy, and the people weren't going for it. In March of 2011, police snipers opened fire on a pro-democracy camp, killing more than 50 people. Good times in Yemen. Call your travel agent. Pay your life insurance first. Let's see what the State Department has to say about Yemen. Starts off pretty plainly. Do not travel to Yemen. Due to terrorism, civil unrest, health risks, kidnappings, armed conflict, and landmines. The U.S. Embassy in Sanan, I think that's how you pronounce it, suspended its operations in February of 2015, and the U.S. government is unable to provide emergency services to U.S. citizens in Yemen. In other words, you're on your own, everyone. Terrorist groups continue to plot and conduct attacks in Yemen. Terrorists may attack with little or no warning. There it is again. <laughs> little or no warning. Why do they keep saying that? And they target public sites, transportation hubs, markets, shopping malls, and local government facilities. Additionally, there is a continuing threat of kidnapping, detention by terrorists, criminal elements by non-government actors. Employees of Western organizations may be targeted for attack or kidnapping. Military conflict can cause significant destruction to the infrastructure, housing, medical facilities, schools, power, and water utilities. This limits availability to electricity, clean water, and medical care. Instability often hampers the ability of humanitarian organizations to deliver critically needed food, medicine, and water. There's also reports of landmines throughout Yemen. Cholera is present throughout Yemen as well. There's limited availability to medicine and medical supplies, and adequate medical treatment is unavailable if you get cholera. If you guys haven't picked up on it already, don't go to Yemen. Number six, Venezuela. The U.S. and Venezuela haven't been on the best of terms for some time now. Just last year, we unfriended them on Facebook. On March 11, 2019, the U.S. Department of State announced the withdrawal of all diplomatic personnel from the U.S. Embassy in Caracas. All services, routine and emergency, would be suspended until further notice. Now, here's the warning that the State Department gives about Venezuela. Violent crimes such as homicide, armed robbery, kidnapping, and carjacking are common in Venezuela. Political rallies and demonstrations occur often with little notice, sort of like those terrorists. Demonstrations typically elicit a strong police and security force response that includes the use of tear gas, pepper spray, water cannons, and rubber bullets against the participants, occasionally devolving into looting and vandalism. There's a shortage of food, electricity, water, medicine, and medical supplies throughout much of Venezuela. The U.S. CDC issued a level three warning to avoid non-essential travel to Venezuela, and that was in 2018, due to inadequate health care and a breakdown of the medical infrastructure in Venezuela. Venezuela is in bad shape. They have been for some time and it is getting worse. It's kind of been pushed to the back of the news channels lately because we've got other things going on, but those people are in bad shape. Don't go there. Don't be part of the problem. Number five, Mali. Mali is a landlocked country in Africa that nobody knows much about. You probably know something about it, but what you know, you probably think isn't real, so you think you don't know anything about it. Have I confused you? Here you go. I'll explain. Mali is home to the ancient city of Timbuktu. Yes, it's real. Timbuktu is like the last city before you hit the Sahara Desert and run the risk of dying of dehydration or heat stroke. So bring sunblock and some Gatorade. And also bring some of that stuff for your lips because when you're dying of heat stroke or dehydration, it your lips are all cracked. It's just worse. It's just the worst. Here's the State Department's official warning. Don't go there. Violent crimes such as kidnappings, armed robberies are common in Mali. Violent crime is more of a concern during the local holidays and seasonal events around Bamako. Bamako is the capital city. Roadblocks and random corrupt police checkpoints are commonplace throughout the country, especially at night. Terrorists and armed groups continue plotting kidnappings and attacks in Mali, like all terrorists do. They may attack with little or no warning, again, like all terrorists do, targeting nightclubs, hotels, restaurants, places of work worship anywhere Westerners are. Due to risks to civil aviation, operations within the vicinity of Mali are restricted by the Federal Aviation Administration. You can't even fly into Mali. Number four, Iraq. So I shouldn't have to tell anyone this, but stay out of Iraq. It was actually safer when we were blowing this country up. State Department's warning goes like this. Do not travel to Iraq due to terrorism, kidnap, and an armed conflict. 
U.S. citizens in Iraq are at high risk for violence and kidnapping. Numerous terrorists and insurgent groups are active in Iraq and often attack both Iraqi security forces and civilians. Anti-U.S. militias threaten U.S. citizens and Western companies throughout Iraq. Attacks by improvised explosive devices, IEDs, occur in many of the areas in the country, including Baghdad. On December 31, 2019, the embassy suspended public services until further notice as a result of damage done by an Iranian-backed terrorist attack on the embassy compound. It goes on. U.S. citizens should not travel through Iraq to Syria to engage in the armed conflict there. You would face extreme personal risks, such as kidnapping, injury, and death, and legal risks, arrest, fines, and expulsion. The Kurdish regional government stated that it would impose prison sentence of up to 10 years on individuals who illegally cross the border. Additionally, fighting on behalf of or supporting terrorist organizations is a crime that can result in penalties, including prison time, large fines in the United States. So there's no reason to go to Iraq. Number three, China. Okay, so everybody knows what's going on with that illness. Now, I can't say the actual name because I'll get demonetized. And I agree with this policy because if YouTube didn't, people would be sensationalizing it and using the name and probably flood YouTube with bad information. So we'll just call it the beer illness. The State Department's official statement is, do not travel to China due to the beer illness first being identified in China. On January 30th, the World Health Organization determined that the rapidly spreading outbreak constitutes a public health emergency of international concern. Travelers should be prepared for the possibility of travel restrictions with little or no advance warning. Most commercial air carriers have reduced or suspended routes to and from China. So if you're there, you're kind of stuck in a lot of cases. Those currently in China should attempt to depart by commercial means. We strongly urge U.S. citizens remaining in China to stay home as much as possible and limit contact with others, including large gatherings. Consider stocking up on food and other supplies to limit movement outside the home in the event that the situation deteriorates further. The ability of the U.S. Embassy and Consulate to provide assistance to U.S. nationals within China may be limited. So it's a bad situation and it has the potential of getting worse or it has the potential of just going away. Really don't know just yet. We'll find out, right? Number two, Iran. If you haven't been watching the news since, oh, I don't know, 1970, Iran hates the United States. They hate everything we do, including women driving, women wearing what they want, dating, movies, and bowling, oddly enough. I know an interpreter who said that when he was a boy in the schools in Iran, that they would play these videos on how evil the U.S. was, like total propaganda stuff. He said for some reason, they always showed Americans bowling. And even at a young age, him and his friends always wanted to come to America just a bowl and they could hardly wait. Anyway, tensions have always been high between the U.S. and Iran, and when we blew up their top general a couple months back, things got worse. Here's the State Department's warning. Do not travel to Iran due to the high risk of kidnapping and arbitrary arrests and detention of U.S. citizens. Those present in Iran should exercise increased caution due to an outbreak of the beer illness. U.S. citizens visiting or residing in Iran have been kidnapped, arrested, and detained on false charges. Iranian authorities continue to unjustly detain and imprison U.S. citizens, often dual national Iranian American citizens, including students, journalists, business travelers, and academics, on charges including espionage and posing a threat to the national security of Iran. Iranian authorities routinely delay consular access to detained U.S. citizens and consistently deny consular access to dual Iranian U.S. citizens. So, yeah, they're just, it's just a mess over there. They hate us and they do everything they can to make it difficult. And, you know, I mean, right now, there's all kinds accusations that they've been helping plan all these different attacks on us. So yeah, stay out of Iran. And number one, Haiti. In my life, I don't remember anything good coming out of Haiti. In recent years, the Haitian government seems to have completely lost control of the entire island. Besides the people being out of control, they've had serious earthquakes and hurricanes over the years that have just destroyed the island. Now here's the State Department's thing. Do not travel to Haiti due to crime, civil unrest, and kidnappings. Violent crimes such as armed robbery and carjacking are common in Haiti. Kidnapping is widespread. Kidnappers may use sophisticated planning or take advantage of unplanned opportunities. Victims include U.S. citizens. Demonstrations, tire burning, and roadblocks are frequent and unpredictable and can turn violent. Local police may lack the resources to respond effectively to serious criminal incidents. Emergency response, including ambulance service, is limited or non-existent. Travelers are sometimes followed and violently attacked and robbed shortly after leaving the international airport. The U.S. Embassy requires its personnel to use official transportation to and from the airport. Robert 
robbers and carjackers have attacked private vehicles stuck in heavy traffic, congestion, and often target lone drivers, often women driving alone. All right, so that's my video of places you don't need to go. I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Stay away from these places. If any of you had any plans of going into these places, just scratch them off your list. Save your life. Stay away from them. Don't forget all the links below. Subscribe if you like what we do here. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.